Well, good morning, Impact. Good morning, Impact. Are you ready to praise the Lord with me today? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, our scripture actually comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. I'll be reading from the ESV, which simply stands for the English Standard Version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we just thank you for you. you just been so good to us. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to see this brand new day. Father God, this day is beautiful because it's your day. You made this, Lord. So we are here today in this corporate worship to praise your holy name. Father God, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Father God, we just thank you for your grace that we don't even deserve. We thank you for your mercy that we don't deserve. Father God, we even thank you for your, our Savior and your Son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we just thank you for just doing anything and everything so we don't have to worry about nothing. We don't have to turn to man if we're going through things. We can turn to you. We can talk to you, Father. We, we know that you are there at all times. So, Father, regardless of the problems, the situations, or the issues, Father, we are thankful that we can rejoice in anything because we know that we belong to you. And, we have, and you have us in your hand. And you protect us from seeing and unseen danger. So, Father God, we are excited to praise you today. Father, we are excited to glorify your name today, Father. We are excited to be here today. And we are thankful that you allowed us to wake up to praise you. So, Father, this we bring in Son Jesus' name. Amen. Come to bless the name of the Lord. You come to bless the name of the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I don't know about you, but I came to lift up the name of Jesus.
transition to our, this part of worship, um, as I was listening to the choir singing, it brought back a memory. Um, I'm a big Cardinal fan, and and they was playing sis, uh, Mets in the playoffs. Uh, and to win the pennant, Yadi Molina hit a home run in the, the top of the ninth to let the Cardinals go up against the Mets. But then the Mets came back and they was bases loaded. And what in baseball, when you're playing defense and the opposite team has the bases loaded, I like when the coach, the manager, actually asks the pitching coach to go out. And when he goes out, they want to make a pitching change. And he put his right hand down like this to call to the bullpen because the team was in trouble. I don't think they get it. So they called what they call as a reliever. And it was Adam Rainwright going against Carlos Beltran, one of the best hitters in the National League, and against one of the best, what they call, relievers in the best league. And what I like about when a reliever do his job and he accomplished his job, they, they call it as a save. So it kind of reminded me of the condition and the position that we was in and the trouble that we was in in regards to mankind. And, and God just stepped in and said, let me call my reliever. Let, let, let me give them a, a, a savior that will stick with them, that will be them, that will walk with them, that will, I can be able to teach them. And not only I'm just gonna send a reliever, I'm gonna send a reliever that looks just like them. That, that he's human just as well as he is. But he also, he, he got a part of me into him because he's divine too. So he's man and divine. We call that hypostasis when you have two. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of teaching right now. So, so when you get in trouble just like, like the Cardinals did when he had to bring that reliever and Adam Rain while he did strike out uh, Carlos Beltran. But I just like about it when every time I get in trouble, I can always get on my knees and find peace. And even if you don't have to get on your knees, you can basically be in your car driving and just talk to him. 
And the thing is, I don't have to wait to talk to him. I can just talk to him any time. And then when I think about the goodness of the Lord each time, where, where he just keep being good to me, and he keeps blessing me, and even though I don't deserve it, goodness always is following me all the time. And what and God is so cold-blooded is because his favor he ain't even firm. And people get jealous of that. And I actually like it because when I see somebody blessed, I know I'm in the facility of getting blessed also. So when you, when you know God and you know the character of God and you know how good he is, you are able to express gratitude to someone that is being blessed by God because you know you are there. You in line. You in line. So he, he, he got this man that gave us this perfect model. Jesus, who we serve. So he wanted to do it. What I like about it is this, he wanted to do it one time. And one time it was finished. So he sent Jesus to die for our sins that gave us the perfect mile. So he gave us 100%. So at this time, impact, it should touch your heart when you give. Because when you give, you have the opportunity to give something that the Lord has gave to you to bless this local assembly. And when you bless this local assembly, knowing how God is, knowing the character of God, he will bless you 10 times more. So we get excited here about an impact. So you know what time it is, Garfield. It's time to give, man. Here at Impact, we are progressive givers. That means we give no less than 10% to our very best. What I love about Impact is you come in giving. You come in giving your praise, and then you also come in giving your worship. Then right after worship, one of the ministers or the deacons will be in the rear at the end of worship to collect your seat for this local assembly. Now, at Impact, we have several ways to give, even though we mentioned four, but we have several ways. The ushers are coming down the aisle. In case if you need an envelope, you can raise your hand. You can also um, give um, through our website at impactchurchstlouisstl.com. You also can give through Cash App, dollar sign Impact Church St. Louis. And then we have these QR codes in the back of the church where you can scan with your, with your phone through your camera, and they'll take you right to the Give tab. Then we also got Jen in the lobby where you can actually scan that card, you know, and she gonna say satisfaction is guaranteed because when they say approved, it's guaranteed. You know, that's, that's what she gonna say. And then when you do give, say thank you. Thank you. Even if it's just giving a penny and that's what you have and you give it from your heart, that's more than the richest person giving a million some dollars because God knows it comes from your heart. And that means you gave 100% and you gave it your all. So with that being said, let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to give to this local assembly for the advancement of your kingdom. Father God, we thank you for the model that you, that you sent to us in your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. Knowing that, we know that you gave your 100%. So we're going to give our 100%, Father. We're going to not just give, just to give. But we're going to give from our heart and we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to touch our heart in regards to giving. So Father, we don't take this for granted. Father God, we take this very seriously. So, Father, this I pray in Son Jesus' name. Amen.
me rest in the meadow's grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream he restores my failing health and he helps me to do what honors him the most yeah. that's why i'm safe that's why i'm safe that's why i'm That's why. 
together for the Lord. Amen. We thank you. Amen. Amen. You may be, you may be seated this morning. He shall, he shall hide me. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. We're going to get going. I just, can we just take a, just take a sign? Come on. Come on, just think for a little bit. We go get to it. Just, just take a moment and worship. I know we we actually have a program. Y'all just don't ever see it, but sometimes we just gotta pause. I dare you, just just take you a good 15 seconds. And I want you to think about the goodness of Jesus. Take you about 15 seconds and give God thanks for him hiding you. I want you to give about 15 seconds to just thank the Lord for all of his goodness, his mercy, his peace, his power, his kindness, his provision, his protection. I just want you to take a minute. We are in worship service, aren't we? We are in worship and we worship the one who loved us, the one who died on the tree for us, the one who treats us better than we treat ourselves. Come on, somebody. Online, I want everybody online, just type, thank you, Jesus. If you're online, just type, thank you, Jesus. If you're online, just type, thank you, Jesus. If you're in the house, I just want you to just say, just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, we take no consideration of ourselves, but we only consider you. Let our flesh be out of the way, but let us consider you. From every mountain to every valley, let us consider, consider you, you. You have been better to us. We, we really, Father God, don't even know how to be good to. We thank you. Because it's by your stripes we are. We are healed. Hallelujah. Thank you for that moment where you were just able to pause for a second. Sometimes we just got to pause for a second. And we are thankful for all of, all of you this morning online. Um, and as you still just solemnly work in worship 
I still want us to speak life into each other. So as I am in a peaceful tone, I'm telling you that I'm about to get loud. May you walk in the will, peace, and blessings of the Lord, church. It does not count because my voice was crackly, so we're going to do it again. And we can't edit that off live stream. I sound like I was singing the other day, Sydney. May you walk in the will, peace, and blessings of the Lord, church. May you walk in the will, peace, and blessings of the Lord, pastor. Amen. Yes, I will. And I pray that you will, too. Guess what time it is? It's time to do what? Yeah. Time to do what? Yeah. Time to do what? Go ahead and share it, man. I can't wait for you to share it. Go ahead. That's your evangelistic tool. You can bring somebody to worship service virtually. All you have to do is click share. If you're online, please share it. You're watching the stream. Why wouldn't you want to share it with someone else? So if you are on Facebook, just go to our Facebook page. Go ahead and click share. Go ahead and click it now. If you don't have Facebook, that's okay. We're on YouTube. Take that link. Send it to a friend. Say, hey, you may want to engage in this worship service with us today. It's going to be an amazing and a powerful and productive word on this morning. And you get to share it. So please, if you're visiting with us, go ahead and share it to your page. You're visiting, so bring somebody else. We are all about bringing what? We bring company because that's how we grow. That's how we get influenced by the word of God. That's how we share with the community around us. So thank all of you for sharing. We spoke life into each other. We spoke a word to each other. Here's the thing I want to share with you real quick. And then we go get to the word for the day. Um, next week is Rep Your Org Day. If you're here online and you're not with us this morning for whatever reason, you couldn't be here. It's Rep Your Org Week. So whatever your organization is you put it on and you, your shirt your whatever but you invite the people in your organization to be here so I'm inviting all the noobs to come and let's big old and, and Anthony and we already got a ton of noobs so don't over cross when, when I'm trying to invite people because I'm just gonna say they might guess anyway any, and, and so and so whatever organization you're in, it doesn't even have to be a fraternity or sorority. You, whatever you are in, Urban League, you may be, you know, your people from your job, invite them, invite them. Tomorrow's going to, I mean, next week is going to be amazing. And then the week after that is Women's Day. We're celebrating women. We're pouring into women. Amen. Hey, I'm telling y'all, sisters, everybody in here give it up for the women. If you a woman, give it up for them. You a brother, brothers, y'all show enough. I to give it up because man women make everything work I'm telling you I'm telling you men may come up with an idea but it's women who make that idea blossom and make it come to fruition I'm telling you I don't know where we would be without women I don't know uh, Doobie what it would be like with a world where you never fussed at I'm just kidding <laughs> You all are so beautiful. We love you all to no end. And we are looking for, uh, forward to Reverend Tracy Blackman, who is a nationally renowned speaker who will be here. She is my friend, man. She's cold-blooded. That's my sister. And she's an AKA at that. So she represents wherever she goes. And y'all just keep growing in the congregation. I don't understand. This is not an AKA convention. It, it was turning into a Delta one at first. So I don't know. We gonna see. We gonna see. So next week, wear your stuff. I gotta find something. I might just. I might just. Uh, I'm out of uh, Perry, so I might just draw something on a white T-shirt. I don't know. I gotta figure something out. And so that's what we'll do. So I'm looking forward to the next few weeks. Here we are, to the point where we are going to share in God's word this morning. And I'm really anticipating this word to be powerful. Um, to be digestive and to be life-changing. And I want you all in here this morning to really be attentive, supportive. I need your support as this word goes forth. And this is why I want you to make him feel so uncomfortable this morning because I ain't preaching. So for all of y'all like, man, we passed the week. We wanted Judah. i see you next week. But in the meantime, we got capable people who can preach. 
And here's what I love about it. Now, I'm going to tell y'all this. Originally, I was going to be out of town today. But I'm not out of town today. I'm here with you. And you online. But I thank God that we have a worship pastor in Jeremy Taylor who can give the word. So impact, I want you to put your hands together, make one of our own. I'm your bishop, the good reverend doctor, worship pastor Jeremy Taylor. Come on, let's put our hands together. That's all right. We haven't always had microphones. I know how to yell. But he told me a couple of days ago that he wanted me to, uh, that I might be preaching because he was going out of town. And so I said, all right. But then he told me that he wasn't going out of town. I said, yeah. <laughs> then he said, but you still got to give the word. I said, no. Because <laughs> I'm tired. I'm out of breath. When you play and direct the choir, it catches your breath. But we praise God for the ability um, to do so. If this continues, we'll just have to do old school, all right? I don't know, I think the horn is blown in the speaker probably. Um, but nonetheless, we know how to make do right impact. Yeah. All right. Do me a favor, let's stand on our feet as we read the word of God this morning. We're gonna do quite a bit of reading. Um, <clears throat> We're going to go to the 12th chapter of Acts. And I won't read this. Started with the 5th verse, and we're going to go to the 16th verse. I believe that Satan knows that this word is coming forth today. And the scripture says faith comes by hearing. And if the enemy can block your hearing of the word of God, your faith can't be increased. So this morning, we're going to work through this sound issues. Can y'all do that with us this morning? Amen. So here we go. The fifth chapter. So Peter was kept in prison. See, so y'all thought she just did that to pastor. She do it to everybody. But earnest prayer was for him was made to God by the church. Now when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, somebody shout behold. behold. An angel of the Lord stood next to him, and the light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, get up quickly, and the chains fell off. And the angel said to him, dress yourself and put on your sandals and he did so and he said to him wrap your cloak around you and follow me and he went out and followed him look at somebody say it's important to follow him he did not know that what was being done of the angel was real but he thought he was seeing the vision when they had passed the first and the second guard they came to a room leading into the city it opened for them it of its own accord. And when they went out, it, they went along one street and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel to rescue me from the hand of Herod and from all the Jewish people who were expected. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl by the name of Rhoda came to answer. 
Recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, girl, you out your mind. What's wrong with you? But she kept insisting that it was so, and they kept saying, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. I said, Peter continued knocking. And when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and share the title of this message. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Don't, be surprised don't be surprised when what I prayed for, I prayed for knocks, on knocks on my door. When what I prayed for knocks on my door. Here in the text we find Peter locked up. He's kept in prison and not because Peter did anything to warrant his arrest other than just belief. Some folk just won't like you simply because you believe. He didn't do anything that would cause such an illegal arrest other than just follow Christ. Some folk just go have your name in your mouth just because you follow Christ. You do know that right? Because you choose righteousness over foolishness, they go talk about you. So there was during the time when the church was being established, the still forming, this church was brand new. This is a new idea because before they were called Christians, they were called, uh, uh, it was called the new way or the way. And so the church was being formed and established. God was doing the new things. Lives were being changed. Cultures were being entered around Christ, but because of the persecution of the saints, the killing of two of Jesus' most inner circle friends, some of the same folks that were excited about what God was doing, they started to scatter. They ran. They got scared. You realize that it doesn't matter if God is doing the new thing if you're still being controlled by your old ways. If you're still being controlled by your own fears, if you're still being controlled by your own anxiety, it counts out nothing because God can do a new thing in an old mind. We know this to be true because Jesus said in the second chapter of Mark that new wine cannot go into old wine skin. But the fresh wine, because of its potency, has to go in fresh skin. Somebody shout fresh skin. New ideas are for new minds. New relationships are for healed new people. New jobs are for fresh and new resumes. You got to go in, in, in a Microsoft Word and clean off your resume and make it new if you want a new job. And so the church was being newly established and God was moving. But when times got rough, some folks scattered. Yeah, they were all for you at first, but soon as some folks started talking crazy about you, they scattered. Yeah, you, they, they reserved the spot at your birthday dinner, but as soon as your name came up in the text thread, they said, all of a sudden, I can't come. It, just, it, it, it might just happen to me. I don't know if it happened to y'all. You see, they bought the shirt, Jeanette. They shared your Facebook post. They said they were going to be there for you, but right when the wrong voices got a hold to your name and started persecuting your brand, they walked out on your vision. See, you cannot embrace what God is doing if you're not willing to let go of the scatter mentality. You have to let go of that scatter mentality. So now here in Peter, he's captured by Agrippa and is now in prison. Word had gotten back to the church, the ones that didn't scatter. Because <laughs> God always has a remnant. He always got a, a corner of people that he can depend on. That when these folk start acting crazy, he can go to these folk. In, anyway, uh, the church did something that was remarkable. The church did something that was impeccable. The church did something that changed the trajectory of Peter's future. What the church did that was immeasurable was they made an immeasurable mark on those who now understand the facets of faith. Even though we don't see this happening in today's church, uh, what they did was important. All that church did was they prayed. I wonder what happened as to why the church is not praying the way that it used to pray. 
Perhaps it's because we have a lot of people coming to church, but they're not coming to pray. Perhaps we have a lot of people coming to church, but they're not coming to worship. Perhaps we have attendance, but we don't have presence. Your body is here, but your mind and your intentions are someplace else. The importance here you have to recognize is not in that the church prayed, but it's how they prayed that made the immeasurable mark on Peter's outcome. The scriptures say that earnest prayer was made to God by the church. The term earnest here in the original text literally means serious prayer. It means eager prayer. It means intense prayer. It means prayer that is effective and fervent. It means that prayer, this type of prayer, has purpose and continuity. In order to pray like this, the church needed to understand Peter's problem. They understood the seriousness of the prison that he was in. They understood that King Agrippa had an annoyance towards certain leaders of the church, so he had a certain hatred for you. They understood. Therefore, they prayed. See, this prayer wasn't any kind of cute prayer. This wasn't no cute patty cake prayer. This wasn't no, now nah, I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. But if I die before, no, they didn't pray like that. But what they did, they prayed based on the information they understood at the time of Peter's situation. They knew he was in prison, but they understood that he was in a more aggressive prison under the authority of a person who hated his guts. The intensity of their prayers were due to the intensity of Peter's prison. Which brings me to your first point here. You have to connect with people who understand your prison. You have to connect with people who understand your prison. Because brothers and sisters, believe it or not, we all have a prison that we're either experiencing now, have experienced, or will experience. We all have a need that keeps us bound to the point of no freedom. But for some of us, your prison is not literal, but it's in your mind. You wouldn't know peace if it was standing right in front of your face. Some of us, your prison is in your wallet or your pocketbook. You keep trying to stay above your bills, but you are payday loan away. You are karma credit away. You are bill away for being out on the street and all your stuff taken. Y'all better quit paying karma. Get it now and pay later, but get you in trouble. Anyway, uh, let me go back here. For some of us, Huh? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not the pastor of this church, so I can't take certain liberties and say what I want to say all the time, so I'm going to stick to the script today. <laughs> For some of us, our prisons are in our heart. It keeps getting broken time after time after time after time again and you just can't seem to break a free from the resi residual heartbreak of your past. Peter's literal prison slash actual prison isn't the same for us today. But our prisons today, though some might be mental, emotional, financial, or maybe physical, whatever your prison is, you still need somebody that can bombard heaven on your behalf. All of us have a need that has, this need right, right here that I got, it needs just a little bit more extra attention than these needs over here. And so though our, 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 our prisons may be different, our genetics may be different, our gender may be different, but when you all cut us, we all have the same medical emergency. You might be in a, tif, a different tax bracket, but your prison is the same. You might be in a different house, but your prison is the same. Prison is something that keeps you away from freedom. But having people in your life that understands your need, somebody shout, you got to understand my need, allows them to be better equipped on how to go to God for and about you. 
Somehow the enemy has confused the church as to thinking, you ain't got to know what I'm going through to pray for me. Well, listen, I can't pray for you effectively if I don't know what I'm praying for. Yeah. Grandma used to say it like this, closed mouths don't get... Y'all got a grandma like that too? Yeah. Notice they did not just know that he was in prison but they understood the type of seriousness the prison was. Just because you know something doesn't mean that you understand something. I know two plus two equals four, but if I don't understand how those two digits work together, I won't understand the basics of math. And if I don't understand the basics of math, that prohibits me from knowing greater equations. Look at somebody and tell them, knowing gets you in the door, but understanding keeps you in the door. I don't need folks in my life who just know about me. I need folks in my life who can understand me. Because the more you know about me, the more you talk about me. But if you understand me... They understood... Therefore, they pray. The prison that you're facing cannot be met with mere emotion only. But you have to connect with people who will earnestly pray for you. You got to connect with people who know how to call heaven and call healing down on your behalf. You got to connect with people who can tell the enemy, stand back until she get better. You're facing your issues in your own because you don't have people that you can connect with. You got friends, but you don't have connections. Anyway. I, can, I, can, I, can I stay right here a little bit? You know, man, you, got to, you can't just look at the body. Brothers, you better say something before I start thinking something. I said, brothers, you can't just look at the body. Don't make me nervous. <laughs> but you got to know that she can pray as if she was in the body sisters, sisters listen you can't get all cutesy in the eyes because he prayed over the Cheerios girl we was on a date and he prayed over to me I just knew he was from God And then you married his joke and realize he can't even carry the family spiritually. Y'all, calm down. I got to finish. Sit down. Sit. Shh. Quiet. You must approach prayer with understanding and wisdom understanding how to pray but using wisdom i'm sorry understanding on what to pray but using wisdom on how to pray proverbs 4 lets us know that wisdom is the principal thing but in all of your getting you must get an understanding i believe the anointed this this powerful anointed group they they are so anointed they call from god to make music on the earth this group called escape They got this song, and they say, all I need from you is what? Oh, sisters, you've been listening to that song, huh? I knew I could make a choir out of y'all. Listen, had they stuck with what they just knew, they would not have gotten the result that they got with Peter. Girl, you know Peter locked up. Well, we ought to send him a care package. Girl, you know Peter locked up. Well, let's go put some money on his books. See, people that do that, that's, all, that's because they just know. But people who understand, they're going to go 
far beyond with what they know and see what can we do to, hit, to get to that need. Sending me a care package is fine. I need you to pray for favor with the warden while I'm up in here. They understood, so therefore they prayed. They didn't gossip. They prayed. They didn't spread rumors. They prayed. They didn't leave him there to die, but they prayed. You know, you know, they don't, you don't know, you don't have to know what folk are going through all the time just to pray. Jesus said in Luke, men should always pray and not faint. The church has a responsibility to pray. I said the church has a responsibility to pray. Brothers, prayer is not a girly thing, it's a godly thing. I say this everywhere I go, as much as I can when I have a group of people in the room. Women love men that pray. Women, sisters, y'all better say something. Yeah. I'm going to start thinking y'all, all right, don't make me nervous now. <laughs> Women love men who can stand before the enemy and say, but God. Yeah. But let me tell you what we have done. We have turned prayer into a ministry. We have turned prayer into a, 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 a thing that people do. Prayer is not something that you do. Prayer is a lifestyle. Prayer is a state of being. Jesus said you should always pray and never faint. As he, Jesus, you know, I find it very interesting how Jesus uses those words, men should always pray because intercession is not an activity, but yet it is a salvific duty. As Jesus calls you to himself to be saved, he's leading you into fellowship with him as well. And you gain fellowship through prayer. You wonder why you always mad because you don't pray. You wonder why you always sad because you don't pray. You wonder why you always filled with anxiety and depression. It's because you don't pray. If you understood whose world you were in, you understand that the world ain't got you. Doesn't matter what I'm in, prayer is what's going to get me out of it. It doesn't matter how long I've been in it, prayer is going to get me through it. And because the church prayed earnestly, because the church prayed fervently, because the church prayed uniquely and purposefully, something happened. Look at somebody and say, something is about to happen. Let me tell you what happened in verse 7. The scripture says, behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him. And a light shone in the cell and struck Peter on the side and woke him. Now, wait a minute. We got to stop here for a second. Peter was bound by two guards. And those two guards had guards. In other words, this brother was in solitary confinement. But an angel of the Lord appeared. But an angel of the Lord appeared in his cell. Now, now, now I, if I read the scriptures correctly, which I try to do as much as I can, that went over some of y'all here. Thank you for the few people that laughed. Jesus Christ, lighten up. Y'all are heavy today. <laughs> when Jesus was crucified and buried in the tomb, his followers, like this, these people, they scattered. You do know that the disciples didn't stay and watch. <laughs> Look at our Savior being crucified on the cross. Behold, God is... No, they got scared of ran. And in their hiding, there was this brother named Thomas. See, word had gotten back to the disciples that Jesus had rose from the grave. But Thomas, the Bible calls him Doubting Thomas, he said, I'm not going to believe this happened until I'm able to put my hand in his hand and put my hand in his side. And so what, let me tell you what happened. Jesus appeared to him. He said, what's all that talk you talking, brother? Here I am. Here I is. Go ahead and touch me now. Thomas was in a prison of doubt. And Jesus appeared. Let's go back. Let's go back further than Thomas. There was a man named Jesus who was crucified and put in a tomb. And something happened. 
Watch your ass. What happened, brother? The Spirit of the Lord appeared in the tomb. And in Jesus arose the Spirit of God and he got out the tomb. Thomas was in a prison of doubt. Jesus was in a prison of death. You mean to tell me Jesus was in the prison? Yeah, he was locked up by death. Death had a hold on Jesus until something happened. And so let's go back. Let's go back. Peter is in jail. God appeared. Thomas was in the prison of doubt. God appeared. Jesus, the crucified one, the resurrected power of God was in a, a prison of death, but God appeared. What am I trying to say to you? What I'm trying to say to you is that God doesn't do a new thing. He just changes who he does it with. God doesn't change his character or his nature. He just changes who he does it with. And so often we're looking for the new thing. We're looking for God to do a new thing. We're looking for a new way. If you're trying to find the new thing, look at what he already did. He appeared. Look at somebody say, he appeared. he appeared. And just as he appeared to them, he is appearing to you today. Because Jesus, he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change his play. He just changes the characters in the play. When God moves, his essence does not change. His character does not change. His nature does not change. But he does change the parameters of which he moves. God did it for your grandma. He did it for your mama. He'll do it for you. God did it for your grandpa. He did it for your great uncle. He'll do it for you. He does it. He, this is why it's important to understand that. Because God cannot change because he is God. We change so he changes who he does it with. Why? So that we can understand God's sovereignty and his supremacy. Y'all get that? Come to Bible study. So the angel of the Lord appeared, struck Peter, and woke him up. He woke him up. He woke him up. He woke him up. He woke him up. Peter, he had to make sure that Peter was of sound mind and vigilance in order to do what God needed to be done. He needed to make sure that Peter was aware. He had to bring Peter from a place of unconsciousness to awareness because the next thing that God is getting ready to do in your life, he's going to have to make sure that you are aware that God did it. So often we try to be moved of God. God Spirit of the living God, fall fresh, take over me, go oh God, so that I might not be myself. No, you're going to have to know that it's God. You're going to have to be of sound mind. You're going to have to be of vigilant thought. You're going to have to be aware. Everybody tell me I'm woke. You ain't woke, you're sleeping. You're going to have to wake up and realize that when God does this, you know that it's him so that you can go back and tell folks, look what God has done. You, 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 we are, shut up, go back, all right. He woke him up saying, get up quickly, and the chains fell off. He got up, and the chains fell off. He got up, and the chains fell off. He got up, and the, he got up, and the, try this out. He got up, and the, Can I tell you something? Chains are a sign to disobedience. It's not that Peter did anything to disobey God, but had he not listened to the voice of the angel and got up, his chains would not have been removed. Peter's obedience was the key that unlocked the chains. And for some of you, your chains are still there because you're disobedient. You want God to move something, but you won't get up. You want God to shake something, but you won't get up. Some of you binding the devil, you're casting down the enemy. No, baby, it's not the devil, it's you. You got to do something if you want to be something. You don't have a job because you won't fill out an application. Your kids are running them up because you won't discipline them. You don't have a husband because you won't go on a date. You got to get up. 
kind of foolishness is that? Uh, let me just stay here for a second, because I'm here. And he said I can do it, so I'm gonna do it. Can I do it? I can do it, all right, here we go. Imagine being hungry, going to a restaurant and not eating. I'm so hungry. I need to eat. Well, come on, baby, let's go to, let's go to Applebee's. Y'all like Applebee's, because they got that little margarita bucket y'all be going to drink. That's good, y'all like the Applebee's. I know y'all be going to the margarita bucket. You know, tell me how it tastes. Listen, and so... Stop! We got work to do. Imagine being hungry, going to a restaurant, but choosing not to eat. That is the very thing that we do to God. We say, Lord, I need you to move. But when it comes down to making the decision on the menu, you get uh, the, uh, the, the slow. <laughs> Second chapter of James said, for we are justified by works and not by faith alone. You've got to do something if you want to see something. My favorite movie in the whole wild world is uh, Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. And in that movie, they have this, this song that they sing. It goes, if you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and stay up I knew I had some millennials in the room. I knew I had a millennial that'll help me out. And Sandy. <laughs> Listen, you have to position yourself for freedom. He got up and the chains fell. He stood in the position of freedom even though he was not free. He had to change his posture to fit his future. Which brings me to our second point. Chains fall when postures change. Chains will fall when your postures change. There is a monumental impact on those who change. Listen, just because something is familiar doesn't mean it's good for you. Some people actually prefer familiar bondage over foreign freedom. Because familiarity doesn't require you to do anything but to remain the same. Posture change must first start in the mind before it can start anywhere else. Proverbs 23 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You've got to think yourself free before the chains fall off. You've got to think yourself happy before your smile ever comes. You have to think yourself healthy before you change your diet. You have to encourage yourself in the Lord. The reason why some of you haven't, your chains haven't broken is because you haven't changed your posture. You're still doing the same thing. You're still going the same places. You're still having the same conversation. You're still dating the same type of people. You're still texting the same man. You're complaining about the same issues, crying over the same complexities, still mumbling and still depressed. You changed husbands, but you didn't change positions. You, 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 you changed jobs, but you didn't change positions. You moved to Texas. But look at you, back in St. Louis. Because you would not change your position. You have to change your posture. You have to change your posture. You have to change your posture. Who Jesus. Your chains can fall because your posture has changed. Do you not realize your children are, are dependent on your posture change? Your family is depending on your posture change. This church is dependent on your posture change. He ain't preaching, but if he were preaching, I'm, used, I'm going to speak vicariously through him. We, oh, I can't do that, let me stop, let me go back. I can do this one. We are called Impact Church St. Louis not Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. 
what happened here was great. It, it was fantastic. It got you where you were. You got saved. You got full of the joy of the Lord. But what's happening over here is different from what happened over here. And in order to do what happened over here, you got to change position. You got to move positions. In the 16th chapter of Acts, Paul and Silas was locked in jail and they began to change their posture by praising God in the midst of their troublesome reality. And their chains fell off. But check this out, not just their chains, but the chains of those around them. When you change your posture, it changes the trajectory of your neighbor. Because when your posture is changed, your reality is changed. And when your reality is changed, your lived experience is changed. And when your lived experience is changed, those who experience you are changed. And if we are not careful, our negative behaviors will diminish our positive message. Revelation 12 says, and they were overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. The blood of the lamb is the message, but it must be followed by a testimony that matches the message. Your life is a testimony that will help overcome those bound in their own prisons. Second Corinthians says, let us uh, uh, know that we are living epistles read of all men. In that day, in the day where everybody thinks it's cute to just read the person who ticks you off. You know, if you make me mad enough, I'm about to read you. I got to tell you something about yourself. Ask me how I know. Because I get read all the time. Yeah, I get read all the time. But it's okay because somebody reading you too. And what they read ain't a cute, lovely story. What they read is a book of horror and hell. Because our postures won't change. But I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I, I'm just ready for a posture change in my life. Is there anybody in the room that's excited about God changing your posture? Look at somebody and say, I'm ready to change my posture so I can change my future. Listen, if you are an introvert, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. We are speaking congregation around here and you just gonna have to be an extrovert today, amen? Changing his posture allowed him more flexibility to listen to the voice of the Lord. Did y'all understand that? He, he, changing his posture allowed him more space to hear from God. So when the angel said, get up, dress yourself, and follow me, he was able to do so. In order to be recipients of God's blessings, we must learn to follow his guide. Because when he leads and when he guides us, he's leading us to, into a place where the blessing is. You want God to bless you, you got to follow him to get to the blessing. He's leading us. It might seem like hell right now, but keep following him. It might seem like chaos right now, but keep following him. I don't know where you are in your life, and it might seem like all oh, hope is lost, but I promise you, if you get up and follow him to where he's leading you, it's gonna be better than where you've already been. In an effort to make sure Peter's, uh, Peter was awake during this miraculous escape, the angel had to shake him and wake him. But in verse nine, he still thought he was having a vision. Because after all of your intellect, after all your analyzing, after all your deducing and reasoning, God still has a way that'll blow your mind. So when Peter had collected himself, and when Peter had come to himself, when Peter had realized that, oh snap, this ain't a vision, this is God, he said, now I am sure that this is a God thing. Somebody shout, this is a God thing. This ain't a good thing, this is a God thing. And when he realized it, he went to the house where the church was praying. He went to the house where the church was praying to change Peter's 
outcome. He went to the place where the church was crying, Lord, save our brother. He went to the place where the church was interceding on his behalf. He went to the place where the church was expecting God to do something. He went to the place where it seemingly looked like that faith-filled believers were there. All right. But when he arrived, he started knocking on the door. And when he got to the place the church was praying, he knocked on the door. When he arrived where they were asking God to deliver him, he started knocking on the door. And this little girl named Rhoda, she came to the door and said, hello? You know, let me say this real quick. I got a cousin. She got the baddest kids. The baddest kids. And I needed to drop something off at my cousin's house. I ain't gonna call the name because my grandma's sitting in the room. <laughs> I had to drop something off at her house. And when I knocked on the door, I heard this little girl, who is it? Now, I like children, but I really like mine. Because y'all kids are something else. I was knocking. Now, keep in mind, they needed what I had. I had the possession of the need they needed. In my possession was the very thing that they asked for. And instead of waiting with anticipation of my arrival, when I knocked on the door, they said, who is it? So Rhoda said, who is this knocking at the door? And when Peter replied, it's me. She ran and told the ones that was praying back there, hey, Peter came home. He's home. He here. What we've been praying for is knocking on the door. And the ones praying told her, girl, you must be crazy. That boy in prison. What you mean he outside? Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that Peter is in prison and you're praying for him and when the angel of the Lord bring the very thing that you've been praying for to your doorstep, your first thing to say is that's not possible? You know how crazy of a fool you got to be to be praying for God to bring you out of something and when he shows up at your house, you then say, this can't be real. How many times has God brought you out of something and you still didn't trust that you were even out of it? How many times did God open up a door for you and you questioned if the door was really open? How many dates have you gone on and things are going so well and then you stopped to say, now wait a minute, who sent you? Because we are, we are so used to our traumas. We are so used to our bad experiences that we don't outweigh our good with the bad. Listen, you got to come to Bible study. He's, he does a, he's, a, he's a wonderful teacher. He's a great, uh, what's the word? He prognoses the scriptures the scripture so well, but he also allows us to be investigators of the scripture too. And this past Wednesday, he talked about how good and evil will exist in the same realm. Yeah. That bad is just the secondary outcome of good. Yeah. If you go up, you got to go down. If there's hot, there's cold. If there's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so you have to understand that life is going to happen to you regardless. I tell people all the time, Jesus said, you promised only a few good days on this earth. And the days that you have, they're full of hell, they're full of trouble, they're full of all kind of mess. So you might as well make your days that's already full of trouble be good for you. So instead of waking up sad, I'm going to wake up happy. Hell, because if hell is here, if hell is here on earth, I might as well look at it as good. Because all things work together for my good. For those who love the Lord and are called. Oh, 
Y'all know the word, huh? Y'all know. He came to the door. He started. We have to understand that we cannot pray and not believe. For with God, all things are made possible to them that believe. There is no problem that God cannot solve. There is no issue that God cannot handle. There is no sickness that God cannot heal. If you pray about it, then you must believe God for it. They doubted that Peter would be at the door because they were attached to the experience they had with Agrippa killing the leaders of the church. Some of us won't believe because of our past experiences, our past hurts, our past traumas with people. But look at somebody and tell them God is still knocking. And when they opened the door and they realized it was Peter, the Bible says they were all amazed. Here's your third and final point. We're going home after this. Doubt causes confusion, but it does not cancel God's plan. Doubt causes confusion, but it will not stop what God wants to do. They were all confused. They were all bewildered at the very notion that Peter was at the door. Rhoda probably, it's not in the text, but I'm just doing a couple of investigative things here in the text. She probably started questioning her own self. Like, I know what I heard. I know I ain't crazy. I know what I saw. You know, folk try to make it seem like what you saw ain't real. You know, when you tell folks something, they like, that, that, get something wrong with you. And then you start doubting your own self. I believe it's in 2 Kings where Elijah told his servant, go out into the mountain and God is going to send you an abundance of rain. And the boy went up to the mountain and he said, the clouds ain't forming. The sun is out. I don't see no rain. So he went back to Elijah. He said, hey boy, hey, ain't nothing happening outside. Elijah said, go back, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. So the servant went back. I would imagine, I can't say what I want to say, but there's a word that starts with the N, and it rhymes with the gripper. And I believe he said, a gripper crazy. You mean to tell me? He came out here and told me, you know, you know, church folk get weird. You know, y'all, y'all, y'all weird me out when y'all act like y'all don't be cussing. I can't believe he said that. You about to cuss today. Let somebody cut you off out there. You go be, huh? Don't be all weird with me, you weird people. So anyway, back to the servant. I said, he said, this is, this, I don't see no cloud, there, no, I don't see any rain. Hey, Agrippa, <laughs> you crazy. There is nothing happening outside. Elijah remained consistent that I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Just because you don't see it doesn't cancel with you heard it. If God told you that your children would be saved, you got to know that your children will be saved. If God told you that your body would be healed, you got to know that your body will be healed regardless of what the tests come back. You cannot allow other people's doubt to cancel what you heard God say. If God told you to write that book, you write that book. If God told you to get that job, you go get that job. If God told you to go get that car, even though your credit bad, you ain't got no money, you get your happy self to that car dealership. Because what God said does not cancel what you see. We have to learn to stay the course. Believe that God is going to see you through. They didn't believe, but you must believe. They don't see it, but you must see it. They don't hear it, but you must hear it. They can't calculate it, but you pull out your calculator even if you can't count. Y'all can't count. I know I can't count. 
I'll pull a calculator out in a minute. Because I have to use whatever I have to understand what God is doing. Because your understanding is brittle. Your understanding is feeble. Your understanding is weak. That's why he said, lean not unto your own understanding. But in all of your ways, acknowledge me. I'll direct you how to go. I'll direct you how to do it. I'll direct you how to do it. I'll direct you how to raise your children. I'll direct you how to be a wife. I'll direct you how to be a husband. I'll direct you how to be a deacon. I'll direct you how to be a choir member. You just got to put down your ways and pick up his ways. Because we live in a world where, where, where information and technology is in our hands. And we have the worst FOMO in the world. Americans have the worst FOMO. You know what FOMO mean? Fear of missing out. We wake up in the morning, right? We go right to social media. We wake up in the morning, we check our emails because of our need to know. And we bring that same thinking into our relationship with God. God, if you do this, then I'll do that. Hit me, what, what, who you think you are? What kind of privilege do you think you have with God that the creation can tell the creator what to do? Amen. So if God said it, you must believe it. The more you pray, the more he knocks. The more you believe, the more he knocks. The more you arise and sit after his face, the more he knocks. And for some of us, we can't hear the knock because we stop believing. For some of us, we can't hear the he knocking. He, he, he knocking. He's knocking at the door of your heart. But you're so far removed from where he's knocking that you can't understand that he's knocking. So you got to keep praying if you want to keep experiencing his knock. Even if you don't see it, you've got to believe it. You've got to keep praying and watch God do what he said he was going to do. You've got to keep praying and watch God. See, the church, it's, remember, they earnestly prayed. They wasn't going to stop praying until they saw something happen. Perhaps that's why they didn't believe Rhoda as to why when she said he's at the door. Because in their mind, they were still praying for God to do something. But, but, but like what we do, we put God on a time schedule. Because we got stuff going on. We have a schedule. Man, bump your schedule. Because life is of a vapor. Things can change at any moment. Your schedule can change at any time. What you have planned can move at any moment. That's why you have to remain in a position to hear his voice. So when you pray, you got to understand that he's knocking. They believed God up until Peter's knock. They believed God would do it up until God did it. They trusted God enough to bring Peter out. But when God brought Peter out, they were still surprised that God brought Peter out. They believed and they knew based on their experiences with God that God is able, God is willing, God is for sure to do what he said he was going to do. But when God did it, they said, huh? Because the enemy will use just a hair of your doubt just a hair of your fear, just a hair of your imagination to remove the promises of God in your life. And so we have to be a people hmm, that are connected with people that know how to pray. We have to be a people that understand that in order for my change to fall, I have to change my posture. We have to be a people to understand that just because you doubt it doesn't mean that God can't do it. So that when he opens up the door, not if, but when he 
opens up when he heals your body, when he glues your marriage back together, when he brings your family back into unison, when he gives you the money you need for the job, when he gives you the money you need for school, when he gives you favor with the teacher to pass this class, when God does it, you won't be surprised about it. This is not the hour where we doubt God. This is not the hour where we doubt God. This is the hour where you must trust and believe that he is a God that can do exactly what he said he would do. So the church prayed. The church saw. The church didn't believe. But then God amazed their faces and he said I am the I am I am the lily of the valley I am the bright and morning star I am the rock of ages I am the lion of Judah I am the salvation you need for your troublesome soul I am the peace of mind I am the joy of the heart that you need. I am the one that you need to lean and depend on. I am the true vine. I am the way out of no way. I am the life you need. So when God start knocking, you need to start believing. When God start knocking, you need to know that it is him. When God start knocking, you need to trust that God is who he said he would be in your life today. Come on, if you believe that to be true, put your hands together. And I mean really put your hands together. And I want you to just stand on your feet and say, Lord, I believe. Come on, you want to shout, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Therefore, it is so. God bless you, Impact. And I pray that that word helped you out today in your walk with God. Amen. Can we put our hands together for our worship pastor, Jer Bear Taylor. Amen. We, we are so grateful for that word, man. Uh, uh, somebody said something behind me, and they said, oh, that's BJ. I said, I just, they said, Bishop Junior. I said, amen. Uh, didn't he do a wonderful job, amen? Did you get, I'm talking about substance, I'm talking about power, I'm talking about life application, and if y'all didn't know he was a comedian, you found out today, and we are so grateful, man. That was a, literally, that was an excellent word, man. I'm not just saying that either. It was a powerful word, and, and I, don't, I don't make excuses uh, for him, and I'm really, I'm proud of all of our preachers, here at Impact Church. I'm so grateful for every one of them. Um, uh, but I don't make, you see he's back on the keyboard, man. Like, like that just comes with the territory. He was here this morning. He directed the choir. He held this meeting. Um, only the one, the few of us who knew he was preaching and, and, and he, he preached and now he's back on the organ. I mean, that, that's, believe it or not, that's, that's a form of training. That, that you don't, you don't, there's times you don't get to just sit and chill. You gotta, because that's just how it is. Um, you, you should see me every Sunday morning. I told y'all, y'all would be like, how he preaching this morning? You, you gotta, there, there is no excuse. Sometimes you gotta juggle more than what you would like. But that's when we depend on God to do what he's gonna do through us as vessels. So I thank you for your work, man. I thank you for your commitment here. I thank you uh, for, for your study, for what you, what you put out. And, and man, that, that, that was a beautiful work. Here's, here's what we're going to ask today. You've been praying for salvation, or you've been praying for a place of worship. Uh, you don't have a home or God is calling you. You've been praying, God, what should I do? and you're here this morning we want you to join our family let me start with online online type i want to connect 
That's what I want you to do. Just type, I want to connect. Our online ushers will reach out to you, and you'll be a part of this fellowship. We've got people who are part of this fellowship all over the country, uh, literally, and we're thankful um, for you. And if you online, you're saying, I, I wish I could have been there today, but I'm making my connection today. Go ahead and type, I want to connect. Now, if you're in the house, you already know where I'm going with this. We have ushers on the side. In the back, they'll hand you a card. You've prayed to be in a place where you can actually grow, where people love on you, where smiles and hugs and etc. You've been praying. Now God is releasing you out of prison into a place of worship by which you can grow. If you're in here, in-house right now, and you are making impact church your home, you've already prayed about it, it's on your heart right now, the only thing I need you to do is raise your hand. Who's connecting right now? Raise your hand. Who did the Lord put on your heart to make impact church your home? Come on, just raise your hand. Now you sitting there and you know the Lord has already spoken to you and you trying to see who gonna be the first one. Now this is a you thing. This is between you and him and you don't know if you'll be here next week. You don't know if you'll live to see another day but while you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Come on, raise your hand. You either wanna be saved or you want to connect to impact, raise your, raise your hand, come on. I want to, I want to, I just want to make sure you have the opportunity. Online type, I want to connect in-house. If, if you have not given your life to Jesus and you say, Pastor, I believe that he died on a cross, rose from the dead. I have not given my life to Christ. I need to be baptized. I'm ready to get my... Th that applies to you too. Or you're here, you're already saved, you've already been baptized, but the Lord said this is your place of worship. This is your place for discipleship. It's my last call. Please, please raise it right, right now. All we're going to do is clap our hands and celebrate you. You knew coming in that, 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 that this was your day and you're sitting there saying, ah, I dare you, I dare you. This is what the preacher said. The preacher said, what the, 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 the shackles you have on you, they only come off when you get up. The freedom of having a fellowship is only gonna happen when your hand goes up. While you're like this and you know what you should be doing, but you're not. That's not beneficial to you or what God is trying to do to you, with you in this house. Come on, raise your hand, last call, fine. Raise your hand. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. Let's get to our announcements, and right after our announcements, we'll be ready to close out and allow Jeremy to give our benediction for today. Hello, Impact Church St. Louis. I'm Jeff Taylor, and this is iNews. Mark your calendar for the following events. Break out your gear, gather your group, and get ready to rip your org. Impact Church St. Louis presents Rip Your Org Day, and as always, you're invited to bring company. Show up and show out for your favorite organization. School, fraternal, professional affiliations are all welcome. Be here Sunday, April 21st at 1015 a.m. Don't forget the Sneaker Ball is happening Saturday, April 20th, and tickets are on sale now. Prices are only $10 for youth and $20 for adults and can be purchased at the welcome desk today. Please see Jennifer following service. Our cafe will be open this month and you can set your sights on these delights. On April 21st, iCafe will be serving your choice of chicken, shrimp, or steak Philly sandwiches and fries. And on April 28th, it's Blessed Brunch, featuring ham, turkey, and assorted salads, and so much more. Remember, 
that drive through is just not for you. So make plans to come on down to the cafe and grab yourself some eats. Please note the Dinner with Pastor event at the Flamingo Bowl has been rescheduled to Saturday, April 27th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. This event is open to ages 20 to 29 years old and guarantees to be a time of great food, awesome company, and wonderful memories, so don't miss it. Impact Church St. Louis is honored to present Women's Day, Sunday, April 28th at 10.15 a.m., featuring special guest speaker, Rev. Tracy Blackman. It'll be a worship service to remember, so make sure you bring company. Sinkling, our new members orientation happening Wednesday, May 8th at 6.30 p.m. To register for this event, please scan the QR code on the screen or visit our website at www.impactchurchstl.com. Our youth needs your time and talents. Volunteers are urgently needed to support our youth ministry. To find out more or volunteer, please see Sister Jackie Fowler today. Impact Church St. Louis presents Teachers Appreciation Day happening Sunday, May 19th at 10.15 a.m. Impactors, make sure you bring company. Neighborhood groups are coming in June and we are looking for facilitators. If you would like to lead a neighborhood group this summer, please see Minister Sandy Ororio. Here at Impact Church St. Louis, we're always doing something. So make sure you catch us on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And of course, you can always visit our website at www.impactchurchstl.com. Thank you for worshiping with us today. This has been iNews.